guys, welcome to our live video. I'm just gonna set up the camera here. Sorry if that's super shaky. It's probably good right there. So welcome back, it's Sarah with Furniture Flip by Sarah. And in today's live video, I'm gonna be painting this retro vintage um, radio cabinet. So it does have a working radio in this part here. Um, and then this was actually a record player, but it is now custom wine storage. So that is really cool. And my dad actually reconfigured this whole unit. Um, so I'm ready to paint it. I went ahead and primed it. I'm just gonna get the questions up that we have for today. So I'm just gonna be using my iPad and answering any questions in the live chat, but I also have some questions from Instagram. So I thought I'll, an I'll answer one of those and then I'm gonna finish priming the inside of this cupboard here. And if you're wondering what I'm using for primer, I am using the Zinsser Shellac based primer. There's primer all over here, but you can kind of see um, if you're looking to purchase this, make sure it says shellac right there. You guys can kind of see that. Um, and this will block your bleed through. I'm gonna end up doing a probably like a paint wash or a stain on these wood parts here. Maybe after I'll show you guys up close, but it has some really nice wood grain to it. So I have my primer here. I have a roller and a paintbrush. This one's just from the dollar store because you need to throw it out after with this primer. Um, I haven't found a good way to clean it off of your brushes or rollers. So that is what I'm gonna be using. And I have printed some of the questions from Instagram. And I have a tea because we are in the garage, it's a little chilly. The first question is, would really love a step-by-step -step for top coats without a sprayer, I'm struggling. So when it comes to top coat, if I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint, for example, uh, my favorite top coat to use is a polyverithane um, in the satin finish. I don't think I have it with me, or I would show you guys. Um, I also use Fusion Mineral Paint's wax. But again, it depends, like if you're doing a kitchen table, the wax isn't gonna hold up. If you're doing kitchen cupboards, it's not gonna hold up. It's more for smaller items that aren't gonna get as much use. So I'm gonna go ahead and start priming. And if you guys wanna say hi in the chat, I do have it live here. So what paint am I gonna be using? So the, right now I'm priming, but I am gonna be using Benjamin Moore paint. I'll show that in a little bit. I'm just gonna finish priming the inside here. Again, I'm just using like a cheap dollar store brush to get into all the crevices. And then I'm using a microfiber roller. You don't need to use one for this step, but what I do is I'll use my rollers a couple times and then I'll just end up using them for primer and then tossing them. So originally this was the speaker um, of the cabinet. It housed the speaker and like a bunch of wires, all that kind of stuff. So we took that out and we're just gonna do open shelving. It will have a back here, so this won't be completely open. Um, and then this is a door, so this actually opens. So I will need to go ahead and prime that as well, but I think for uh, the sake of this live video, I'm just gonna prime in here and get painting. That way you guys can really see how it's gonna look. Again, if you guys have any questions while I'm painting, just make sure to leave them in the live chat and I will be checking that to answer any of your questions. I am doing this live solo today, so I don't have anyone behind the camera. That's why I had printed some of the questions from Instagram, but I'll make sure to go ahead and check 
if there is any questions. Okay, so I'll probably need to come around here to finish priming this, just because it's kind of tricky. Again, if you're just joining in, I am priming this piece. I went ahead and primed the front of it before we went live. I'm just getting the inside here. And I'm using the Bin Zinzer Shellac Base Primer. I find this one the best for covering bleed through. Um, let's say you were using this and it started to bleed through like maybe on the first coat. Just go ahead and add a second, third, sand in between coats if you need to, but it will cover. Especially if you're painting white or lighter colors, you need to be priming your pieces. Because the worst is that you end up painting it, top coating it, and there's bleed through and you kind of have to do that whole process again. I'm just going to add a bit more on the front there. Should be good to go. Okay, so I have my Adventure Color Paint here. This is one of my favorite green colors I'm going to be using again. If you guys can see the color name there. And a little bit came out, but that's okay because we got quite a bit. So let's get started. And I'm going to be using a microfiber roller and then a brush. So this brush here, I mean, I've painted with it so much that the name is covered up, but this was recommended to me at my Benjamin Moore and I believe it's poly based. Um, like the bristles, but this one is great for Benjamin Moore. So I'm going to be switching between my roller and my brush. And what I love about Benjamin Moore paint, pros and cons, um, pro, it has a built-in top coat. So you can pick your finish. You can pick matte, pearl, satin, uh, gloss, semi-gloss, and it has it built into it. You don't need uh, to put anything on top of it. I think if you did, it would just kind of come off. Like there's not much that would stick on top of this paint. It is thick, but it levels out really nice. I'm just kind of getting into the crevice here, making sure the paint is soaking in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and roll. of using Benjamin Moore paint would just be time. Because it does take 16 hours in between coats, um, it doesn't really allow you to kind of get a piece done, let's say in a day or two, if it needs three, four coats. Uh, their whites usually need four coats, so you just want to make sure if you're using this paint, you're allowing yourself that time, especially if it's for a client. You want to make sure they're aware as well, like how long it's going to take and make sure you give yourself time um, to let it dry properly and work on the piece. And I'm going to be very careful around these fronts here because I am going to go ahead and either stain them or paint wash them. I wonder if I can bring you guys a bit closer to look at the piece. Let's see, it might be a little bit shaky, but you can kind of see that wood grain. It's really pretty and I didn't want to cover that up because I think it's really unique to the piece and it's nice to keep a bit of the original, sorry, original finish. Set you guys back up there. So I'm just going to be very careful when I go around the piece. This brush is usually pretty good for that. 
A tip as well, don't go right to the edge, go a little bit offset so then when you push the brush down, the paint will just kind of slide right in there. Just kind of like that. And if I remember, I will show you guys the radio parts inside and the cover for it. It's gonna be super cool and retro. And then again, we have the custom wine storage. So once this live is done, I will end up finishing this piece this week and it will be available for sale on our Instagram account. So if you're not already following us there on Instagram, we show what we're working on, available pieces, tips and tricks, and just a bit of lifestyle as well. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. It's Furniture Flip by Sarah. Yeah, this green is so pretty. It's almost like a deep, it's like a soft green, but it almost has a bit of gray in it, which is super nice. And it's also like a nice neutral green that goes with a lot. It's not too bright. I would say it's closer to like a sage green. You guys can kind of start to see the color coming together. And I don't know, depending where you are, where you're located, where we are right now in uh, Toronto, Canada, we are in lockdown, but uh, Benjamin Moore is still offering curbside pickup for uh, paint and rollers, all your supplies you need, you can still get a hold of if you're looking to paint a piece during lockdown or update a piece for yourself. They also have all their colors online. And again, you can pick your finish. Once I get the front of this here done, this little door. I'm going to go ahead and read the next question from Instagram. So as well, if you follow along on our Instagram, you can pre ask a question. So really focus here. And if I do get any paint on the edge of this, I will just go ahead and sand it off after. But again, you could tape it off to be uh, super safe and make sure nothing gets on the wood. Okay. So this piece is already looking so much better and this wood tone against the green, I'm really loving that already. So I'm really happy that we kept that. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and read the next question from Instagram. And to address the last question, it was talking about top coats. Um, you can check out any of our other videos where we've used like Fusion Mineral Paint, for example, because with the Benjamin Moore, you don't need the top coat. So I don't show that, obviously, because that's already built in. But with Fusion, I have shown um, two different top coat options and the step-by-step -step process. So the next one is, do you sand in between coats for fusion mineral paint? And no, um, if it's something is like super rough or maybe something got in my paint, then yes, I will go ahead and do that. But usually I do thin coats of paint. So I usually don't need to sand in between them. Again, um, if you want it super smooth or if you kind of see your brush strokes, Maybe you're not using the right brush. You can go ahead and sand it down in between coats. Of course, even with Benjamin Moore, you can do that as well. As long as you allow that cure time, you're going to be fine to uh, sand it down, clean it and start painting again. Okay. 
Again, if you guys have any questions, make sure to just leave them in the live chat. I am looking over and checking that. And if any of you watched last Sunday's live video, we were working on a few uh, vases and jugs, just kind of revamping them and making them more modern. I have the one that I didn't get to finish yet um, out in the garage with some fusion mineral paint. So I will also show that to you guys. Just get this painted. I'm really happy I went with this green color. It's such a nice, almost like neutral if you're wanting a bit of color, but you don't want something too bright. Um, I think it's like the perfect in between green. and do this side over here. So I just got a question um, from the live chat. It says, how long do you have to wait in between coats? And when you're using Benjamin Moore paint, for example, you need to wait 16 hours in between coats. Um, you wanna make sure you give it the proper amount of time to dry because again, it does have that built-in top coat. So if you went ahead and just started painting it, um, it might start to get clumpy and your finish is not gonna be very good. I am gonna need the brush just to kind of get into a little Credits detail here on the side, just the way the piece was built, it kind of has a little indent. Again, you could fill in any little uh, nooks with wood fill, but this the paint can just get right into and you won't even see it when it's done. just some little pieces in my paint so I'm just going over um, and taking those out. I also can't wait um, for the lockdown to be over so we can go thrifting again. Um, I would love to do some more thrifting videos for you guys. Uh, maybe even some thrift store challenge, like challenges. Um, if you guys have any ideas, leave them down below. You can always send us um, a message or email of anything you'd like to see. And even if um, you guys would prefer these lives at a different time, Maybe a bit earlier in the day. I know at Sunday at this point, everyone's probably resting. So I was thinking um, for next Sunday, maybe doing it earlier in the afternoon. But if you have any requests, just make sure to let me know. So because this piece was um, really old and it seems like it's almost a little bit bumpy, my paint, I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down tomorrow once it all dries before I do the next coat. And with this color, I will probably do three coats. I could probably get away with two, but I'm probably gonna just do three just to be safe. But this cover is amazing. And again, if you want to see this all finished, make sure you head over to our Instagram account because I will be sharing it in a few days. Okay, I'm going to 
gonna go ahead and paint this door here. and kind of see how it's looking so far. So we have a question um, from the live chat that I'm just going to go ahead and answer. So it says, where do you find most of your pieces to flip? Do you have a rule of thumb when it comes to how much you'll spend on a piece, for example, a dresser? So I definitely like to get a really good deal because you need to account for all the work you're going to be doing for a piece. So let's see, where do I find my pieces? So a lot of the times people will even reach out to me um, if they have something. So people will message me and say, hey, I'm getting rid of this or I'm selling this. I'm just going to pull up this chair here to paint the inside. Um, so sometimes people will reach out to me, but if I'm looking for a piece, probably Facebook Marketplace is my first place to go to. Thrift stores, um, I find a lot of thrift stores lately are marking up their prices, so it's harder to get um, a really good deal. Depending, like, so rule of thumb for a piece, I don't have, like, a certain limit I would spend on a piece. I mean, if it's something super cool and antique, I'm going to spend a lot more. Um, on it because I can make more on it. I don't really have a rule of thumb, but you also just want to, let's say a dresser is $50. You want to okay, calculate, okay, like let's say my supplies are going to be 80 to $100, my labor. Um, you want to kind of take that into consideration for, I mean, business purposes. It's definitely better to be spending a little bit on your pieces, whether it's, let's say 50 to a hundred dollars. I mean, I don't think I would spend more than a hundred depending on what it is. If it's something like I said, rare or super antique. Um, but I, I definitely love a deal. But again, um, sorry, what I was getting at was for like your business purpose, the more you spend, it's going to um, look good when you do your taxes and everything, because if you're getting pieces for, let's say, 20, 10 bucks, your profit margin is going to be really good. And it's, it's going to seem really good at the beginning. But um, as your business grows and you have to do your taxes, you're going to get taxed huge on that profit because you've been buying your items for so cheap. And that goes uh, to for free items. You want to be essentially purchasing your pieces. If it's just something you're doing on the side to uh, flip here and there, then obviously that's not a huge deal for you. And then I think the last part of the question is, oh yeah, just a rule of thumb when it comes to dressers. Okay, so I think we answered that. By we, I mean me. <laughs> And we have one more question, I believe, from Instagram. So a question from Instagram is, have you ever done furniture using stencils? What's the best way to apply it? Roller, brush. Um, for me, myself, I prefer to use a stencil brush. I have some just from the dollar store and they work great. Um, a tip when stenciling, you want to offset your brush. So let's say, for example, this was my stencil or my brush, my stencil brush, and I am going to be stenciling on this piece. You're dabbing the stencil brush. When you put it in the paint, you want to dab off most of it. You want to be putting on as little as possible because if not, depending how thick your stencil is, it's going to bleed through and you're going to have to sand it down and redo it completely. So. I use a brush and make sure you're using as little paint as possible. If you have to do a couple coats, that's better than it bleeding through. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish painting the inside here. And if you're wondering what is 
on my tray. I just have some tin foil on here. I prefer to just put some tin foil on and roll right over that instead of buying the plastic sheets. Not only can it get pretty pricey, but I feel like this is better for the environment. Of course, you could just rinse it out, but sometimes not all the paint comes off, especially if you're using a primer, like the shellac base primer. That stuff is super sticky and not going to come off. So I will have to go in and when this video isn't live, kind of get into all of the nooks and crannies of this piece. But I think it's looking pretty good so far. Just wanted to kind of go over that, get any of the white spots. So I'll share, share with you guys the jug from last week's live video. So this is the jug here that we were using. Um, I ended up putting some dry deck spackle um, all over this piece, just kind of in different sections, pretty thick, thinner in some areas, just kind of give it some nice texture. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this for you guys. Maybe just move this back a bit. So for this, I'm going to be using fusion mineral paint. And I am using the color Coal Black, if you guys can see that. Now this paint, the dry time is two hours roughly. So you're able to get more coats done uh, sooner. But again, you need to go ahead and top coat it. So it's really just personal preference. There's a ton of more paint brands I would love to test out. Um, but we have been doing a lot of custom orders lately and uh, I don't want to be testing out paints for custom orders because if anything goes wrong, it's going to be more work on my end. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. I am using a brush from my local home hardware. This is a two inch brush. I believe it is meant for doing like corners and trim, but it is really good for furniture as well. And this I let dry since last week. So we're good to go ahead and start painting it. I love upscaling decor. There's so many things that just get thrown into landfills that really just need a coat of paint or added some detail to them. They just need a little bit something and then they're new again. I'm gonna check our live chat. Make sure I'm answering everything. So you guys can already see how nice that paint is going on. This is one coat. So typically when I use Fusion Mineral Paint, um, they're black especially, I'll do two to three coats. Um, but the third coat, so if I'm brushing it on, um, I'll end up doing my final third coat or fourth coat with a roller. Um, and the reason why I don't use a roller for all the coats with Fusion Mineral Paint, um, I find it's not as self-leveling um, when you use a brush with it, when you use the roller, you kind of get the bumps where with Benjamin Moore, it really smooths it out. Um, so then once I brush on the three coats, I just go ahead and roll the third or fourth. And that way I don't get the bumps, but I get a nice even finish um, that's ready for my top coat. So if you're doing um, a piece that is like super detailed, or kind of like this has a lot of texture. You just kind of want to almost press into it like this. You don't need to necessarily brush like that. You can see um, how much that covered where if I go in like this and get into all the crevices, it looks a lot better and it covers a lot more surface.
So that's the top part um, where the radio sits. It's kind of top heavy, so it just kind of fell forward. Yeah, this little jug is already looking so cute. I am going to be painting the top handle. You guys can probably get a good idea of how that's looking so far. I'm going to end up keep, keep going with this. And I think I just got some paint on my nose. <laughs> But I'm going to end up finishing that up. I think I'm going to wrap up today's live video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I loved having you guys here along with me while I painted this piece. If you guys have any um, requests for live videos or if you'd like it on a different time, different day, definitely let me know and you can leave me your questions and I will answer them. Um, but other than that, I think we're all good. I guess I'll just take you guys off of this stand and kind of show you up close this piece. So right here is where the working radio goes. It has um, a really nice retro cover. And then again, if I can pull this one out, this is the custom wine storage, which is super cool. You can put a couple regular size bottles and then a few smaller ones up here. And then we're going to go ahead and use the original hardware. I'm just going to spray paint that. And then again, this will be an open shelf. And then this is a cupboard that opens. So thank you guys so much for watching today's live video. I will see you next Sunday. Bye.